first half of chapter nine, practice test. And it says, determine whether each sequence is arithmetic, geometric, or neither. Write a recursive and an explicit formula for each sequence, and then find a sub 10, which is a lot of stuff. You know, you look at it and you go, it's kind of like a part A, B, C, and D. But there are prompts down here to help you through all of that. So you don't have to like remember all those little pieces. So let's take a look at number one. Number one, to be arithmetic, they have to be adding the exact same thing every time. Is it arithmetic? Uh-oh, got some yes and got some no. What would they be adding every time if this is arithmetic? 23 plus 6 is 29, 29 plus 6 is 35, 35 plus 6 is 41, so they're adding 6 every time, and that makes it arithmetic. And again, I suppose I should remind everybody it is supposed to be pronounced arithmetic, but arithmetic just makes more sense. So then you grab your formula sheet, which you're going to have for the test, and you know that recursive formulas have that a sub 1 equals piece to it. So there will only be two of them on the formula sheet. And remember, the ones with pluses are the arithmetic ones. So a sub 1 equals 23. And to find any term, we want to take the previous term. And remember, a sub n minus 1. n minus 1 is all a subscript. All of that should be teeny. And we just said they were doing what to each term to get the other terms? Adding 6. There it is. So we give them the first term, which is the starting point, And then we tell them what to add each time. But explicit. You're going to go to your formula sheet, and you're going to say, hey, I remember using this one a lot because it has a plus in it. And I remember from doing the homework that that is definitely the arithmetic formula. What are the two things we have to put into that formula? a sub 1 and d. So a sub 1 is sitting right there staring at us. That's 23. And we just said d like twice already as we did this problem. It's 6. Now, we don't leave it like that. We know that. We have to simplify it. So we distribute the 6, and we combine like terms. 23 minus 6 is 17. And that goes down here under explicit. So again, recursive formulas, you always have to say, start with this number. a sub 1 is, what is this number? And then the last part of this is, find a sub 10. So what's the easiest formula, red or green, for us to find the 10th term? The explicit, the green one. So let's go ahead and put a 10 in there and see what we get. a sub 10 equals 6 times 10 plus 17. So a sub 10 equals, well, 6 times 10 is 60, and 6 plus 17 is 77. Because recursive, you'd have to find the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and go all the way up to the tenth in order to find it. All right, everybody okay with the first arithmetic series that we looked at? Okay, so test-taking strategy. What do we expect the other one to be if that one was arithmetic? Yeah, it's probably geometric, but we better check it out. So is 15 divided by 5 the same thing as 45 divided by 15 and the same thing as 135 divided by 45? That's what we would be checking. So you, I don't think you need your calculator for 15 divided by 5. You know that one's 3, so then you quick check. 45 divided by 15, yes, that's 3. 135 divided by 45, yes, that's 3. So geometric. And then you're going to go to your formula sheet and say, what's the other one that has the a sub 1 stuff? a sub 1 equals 5. And you'll see the formula says a sub a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 times r. And we just found r. r is 3. So to find any term, take 3 times the previous term. You could write it as 3 times a sub n minus 1, or you could write it as a sub n minus 1 and then put parentheses around the 3. It doesn't make any difference. 
but it's r times the previous term. Explicit. You go look for your explicit rules. And you see this one. And you say that's the one that had the multiplication in it, because raising things to a power and then multiplying by them will get me geometric. What are the two things we have to put in that formula? a sub 1 and r. Now, there's no more math we have to do with that one. That formula, you just plug them in, and that's done. So a sub n equals 5 times 3 to the n minus 1. Which formula do you want to use to get the tenth term, red or black? Black one, yeah, explicit formula. So we'll put a 10 in here. But 10 minus 1 is 9. So we need 5 times 3 to the ninth, and you could punch it in exactly like that, parentheses and all. 98,415. Should it be big? Because you might get worried about that on the test. Should it be a large number? Yeah, we're constantly multiplying by 3. These numbers are going to get big. So, yes. Makes sense that that would be a big number. So again, test taking strategy, you know, if the first one's arithmetic, the second one's probably going to be geometric. So you want to look at those things. Now, this one says write a recursive definition for the sequence, then find the seventh term. So we already did an arithmetic one. We already did a geometric one. Now anything's up for grabs. So we check and we see, well, they're adding 2, then they're adding 3, then they're adding 4. That's not arithmetic, though. And 17 divided by 15 is definitely not the same thing as 20 divided by 17. So this is from section 9.1, where we had to make a table and then try to see a pattern. from these numbers. But the very first thing we do is say, hey, if it's recursive, we have to tell them what to start with. The first term is 15. So that's what we do. We tell them to start. And then we hope by looking at the table for just a few seconds, we can say, oh, I see it. This is what they're doing. Giving you a chance to see if you can find the pattern. Anybody see it and can explain it to everybody what you see? Go ahead, Blessing. Ah, so this plus this gives you this. This plus this gives you this. So again, that's going to be take the previous term and add n because those are the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 up there. Now, this one we have to do recursively because we couldn't come up with an arithmetic or geometric formula for it. So we might want to just extend this since it said find the seventh one and just keep going. So 24 plus 5 was 29. What's 29 plus 6? And what's 35 plus 7? There it is. We have it. Look for something basic. We're not going to give you a really tough one of these trial and error ones on the test. You know, make the table, and it'll be something where you go, oh, I see the numbers are doing this as you go through it, and you'll be able to get that done. All right. These two hopefully will seem too easy. So find the first five terms in each sequence. They've already given us the formula. So we just have to find the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So remind me again, how do we do that? You plug in the numbers, exactly. So you put a 1 in. Then you put a 2 in. Then you put a 3 in. 
And maybe about now you start to see, hey, I think there's a pattern here, but it's a test, so let me keep writing this out. If I can keep myself from writing the answers, that is. So over here in the little blank, we're going to put... 5 comma 7 comma 9 comma 11 comma 13. There's our sequence. Now 5, we need to do the same thing, but different formula. So we're going to plug them in and see what we get. 3 times 4 to the 1 minus 1. Hey, 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything to the zero power is one. So three times one is going to give me three. Three times four to the two minus one. We have to do exponents first, order of operations. So two minus one is one, four to the first is four, and four times three is 12. Keep going. Three minus one is two. 4 squared is 16. 16 times 3 is 48. Now maybe at this point you remember, oh, wait a minute, this is geometric. They're multiplying by 4 every time. And then you just go ahead and keep multiplying by 4. But it is a test, so it wouldn't hurt to write these down. So 3 times 4 to the third, but we already know all we have to do is keep multiplying by 4. And multiply by 4 one more time. And then make our little sequence with the commas here. Three, twelve, forty-eight, one, ninety-two, seven, sixty-eight. So everybody will get that one right. Correct? All right, let's take a peek. Next up, find the missing term of the sequence. Now, these formulas you're not going to have on your formula sheet. These two, you have to know how to find them. Anybody remember how to find the middle one when you have an arithmetic series? Add them together and divide by 2. So we've got 50 divided by 2, which is 25. And hopefully you're thinking, hey, that's arithmetic mean. And maybe, just maybe, then that'll help you remember what you have to do for the geometric mean for number seven. Anybody remember geometric mean? Okay, there's four spots in a proportion. These, these two are the two middle ones. And then we have a 45 and a 5. And then we just cross multiply. So g squared equals 5 times 45. So let me punch in 5 times 45. Or you can punch it in too. 225. How do we get g? Square root of both sides. Now do we know whether or not it's supposed to be positive or negative? We don't. And what is the square root of 225? So it could be positive 15, but it also could be negative 15. Again, whenever we physically take a square root, we need to stop and say, hey, I need plus and minus here. Determine whether each sequence is arithmetic, geometric, or neither. Identify and label D or R. Alrighty, taking a look at 8. Well, if it goes from 80 to 20, that'd mean they're adding a negative 60, right? Is 20 plus negative 65? Well, then it can't be arithmetic. So then we check geometric. Is 20 divided by 80 the same thing as 5 divided by 20, the same thing as 5 fourths divided by 5, and the same thing as 5 sixteenths divided by 5 fourths? 
has to be if it's going to be geometric. And you could certainly use your calculator to figure this out. But 20 divided by 80 is 1 fourth. And so is 5 over 20. So maybe you grab your calculator and punch in parentheses, 5 divided by 4, parentheses divided by 5, math number 1. Oh, look, it's 1 fourth. Parentheses 5 divided by 16, parentheses divided by, parentheses 5 divided by 4, parentheses, math number 1. Oh, look, it's 1 fourth again. So this one is geometric. And does geometric have a D or an R? Oh. 50-50 chance. Is geometric a D or an R? R, common ratio. So one-fourth. Take a look at number nine. Do you see a pattern? What are they doing? Adding a negative three. So what type does that make this one? Arithmetic. Arithmetic, a D or an R? D, common difference. So R is common ratio, and D is common difference. OK, let's try number 10. Is it arithmetic? No? Um, is 13 over 9 the same thing as 21 over 13 and the same thing as 33 over 21? No. So what do we have to put for that one? Yeah, those are our choices. It's either arithmetic, geometric, or we put neither down here. And that means you can't find D or an R because D is just for the arithmetic um, sequences and R is just for the geometric sequences. So it's just neither. And you're done. All right, so that was helping us understand not just how to find the terms in the sequence, but also identifying them. And now, number 11, unless I scroll too far. Nope, it's number 11. Um, use the given information to write an explicit arithmetic rule and find a sub 10. All right, so we look down and we find the arithmetic rule because we know it has a plus on it. And there's two things we need. What are they? A sub 1 and D. Uh-oh. We have A sub 1. But they did give us two other numbers that could go somewhere in order for us to figure out what D is. So this is what I have so far. I know I have to find D, and I know they gave me a 2. I just have to figure out where the 6 goes and where the 32 goes. What does the 6 go in for? N, because it's the 6th term. And this is supposed to come out to 32. So now we just follow the order of operations and say, oh, forgot my little plus there. 6 minus 1 is 5. So 32 equals 2 plus 5D. And we've got ourselves a little two-step algebra equation. Subtract 2 from both sides. And divide by 5. Now we can write it. Now we can write the formula. But this was important because we didn't know what D was. So a sub n equals 2 plus n minus 1 times our nice little 6 that we just found. Again, that's not done. We always simplify our formulas. So there's our first part to this answer. And it's a good thing there's a little reminder over there to find a sub, a sub 10th, or we might forget that, because we just did a lot of math to get this. So what do we do to find the 10th term? Plug a 10 in. What's 6 times 10? 60, and what's 60 minus 4? 56. 
So again, the bulk of the points is going to come from these formula pieces that you do over here. If you just write the answer down over there, I can't give you any points. Remember, this test is all about the formulas. You have to use the formulas to find the information that you need. So there was an arithmetic one that had a little bit extra for us to do. <clears throat> Pardon me. Use the given information to write an explicit geometric rule and find a sub 7. So we look down at our formula sheet. And we remember that's the geometric rule, although my one got kind of big there. So that's part of that exponent. And we say, woohoo, they gave us a sub 1. Uh-oh. What else do we have to have to write this formula? We have to have r, and we don't have it. So we have to figure out, putting the r right here, when it says a sub 4 equals 2 fifths, which one goes where? Well, where does the 4 go? It is n. And this has to come out to 2 fifths. So because it's a fraction, we might want to multiply both sides by 1 over 400 so that we're not dividing here. And 4 minus 1 is pretty obviously 3. So with 400, we'd be able to cancel out the 2 and make the 400 200. 1 over 5 times 200. 1 one thousandth. Now, how do we undo cubing something? Cube roots. And that is on our calculator. Remember... We're not guaranteed this is going to be a cube root on the test, so we're going to do this one generically. We're going to say math number five. Oops, I need to put the three on there first. Quit. So I want three math number five, as that tells the calculator it's going to be the cube root of one divided by 1,000. And it says 0.1, which we know is one-tenth. But you could certainly hit math number one to get that to change, too. All right, now do we have everything we need to write the formula? We do. So a sub n equals 400 times one-tenth to the n minus 1. And that could go in that first blank up here. Like so. And then we see there's another blank because we're not quite done yet. So what do we do to find a sub 7? Plug in a 7. And 7 minus 1 is 6. So let's let the calculator take care of that one for us. 400 parentheses, 1 divided by 10, parentheses, to the 6, and then math number 1, enter. So now we get this answer, 4 times 10 to the negative 4th in scientific notation. That means the decimal is right behind that 4 right now. Because this is a negative, we have to move that decimal to the left four places. And if you wanted to write that as a fraction, you certainly could. You certainly could change that to four. What do we got? Ones, tens, one, ones, tens, hundreds, thousandths. So it would be four one thousandths. But you can put this on there as well. And we'll take it. And it'll probably end up being a nicer number on the test anyway. I wouldn't worry too much about that. We try to make the ones on the test come out to something decent, uh, not things where your calculator is going to have a fit and start going into scientific notation. All right, that's number 12. Let's take a look at number 13. Oh, unless it's on the page down here. Let me scroll and see if I fit it on here. I did. What is the sum? of the finite arithmetic series. So then I start thinking, oh yeah, this is Gauss's little formula. You know exactly how many 
see there are s sub n equals n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. And you'll know it because it has a plus in it. Anything with arithmetic, hard to get arithmetic out this morning. Anything with arithmetic is a plus. And the first thing we have to do is figure out what n is. Uh-oh. Can we tell how many terms there are over there? Not with the dot, dot, dot. So that means we have to use the rule to figure it out. Now, the good news is we can find the two things we need to write the rule pretty quickly. 17 is the first term. What's D? What are they adding every time? Eight. So let's distribute and combine like terms. Oops. OK, now here's what we need to know. We need to know where that 209 fits in. Do you put the 209 in for n or a sub n? a sub n, because it's not n. That's not the number of term. That's what we need. So now we've got a two-step algebra equation here. We're going to subtract eight from or nine from both sides, and then divide both sides by eight. And we get n is 25. Well, now we can finally go back and use the other formula. Because we needed n for that 25 divided by 2. What's the first term? What's the last one? Yeah, so that part we didn't need to do any additional formulas for. We needed n. That's what we needed the additional formulas for. So you might want to do 17 plus 209, whether or not you do it in your head or not, or with a calculator. I don't care as long as you get the right answer there. 25 halves does not reduce. So you leave that 25 halves times 226. And then we'll just take our little 226 and multiply it by 20, 25 halves. Two thousand eight hundred and twenty-five. And we'll put that on the blank. And that helps us double check that there wasn't a follow-up question to this one either. It was just what is the sum of the finite arithmetic series? So we've got twenty-eight twenty-five. Formulas. Have to use the formulas. I don't think I was able to fit fourteen down here. Nope. Find the sum of the finite series. OK. Well, first we better figure out if this is arithmetic, geometric, or what it is. So is that arithmetic, n cubed plus 2? No, because it has to look like mx plus b. So that's not arithmetic. Does it look like geometric, like that? No, there's addition here. So. It's not arithmetic. It's not geometric. That means I can't use my fancy formulas. But here's a hint that we're just supposed to generate these anyway. It's only from 1 to 7. So we'll make a table. And we'll find them. And then we'll add them all together. So again, it's kind of a hint when you see, oh, they only want from 1 to 7. Oh, they only want from 1 to 5. You know, that we probably are just going to have to generate them. So we'll put a 1 in. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. And 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And 8 plus 2 is 10. And you could use a calculator for these two. 3 cubed is 27. 27 plus 2 is 29. 4 cubed. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64, plus 2 is 66. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125, plus 2 is 127. And I would guess that's probably where people have stopped memorizing, because we didn't do a whole lot of 6 cubes. So you could do 6 to the third plus 2, 218. 
7 to the third plus 2. 345. And then what do you have to do? Add them all up. All right, calculator, we need 3 plus 10 plus 29 plus 66 plus 127 plus 218 plus 345. 798. There it is. So we've had two problems so far that were not arithmetic or geometric, but we don't give up. You know, we make tables and we see what we can find and go from there. So let's look at 15. So like I said, I'd like us to get through 15 and 16. I better check the clock. How are we doing? We are done at 918. We can get through these. All right, so this says, using the series formulas, find the sum of the finite series. So take a look at 15. Is that arithmetic? mx plus b. Remember, n is going to stand for x. This is arithmetic. So we grab Gauss's formula. Remember, the ones for arithmetic have the plus. Oh, man, we need to know what n is. Calculate n. What is n? 22 minus 1 plus 1. So what will it be? 22. Good. So it'll be 22 over 2. Now we need to figure out the first number that'll pop out of this thing, which means we take this little one and we put it in there. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. So if that's how we get the first one, how do we get the last one? Yeah, plug in a 22. So negative 2 times 22 is negative 44 plus 5. I'll do that one up here because I'm guessing most people don't want to do this, do the uh, negatives in their head. And you could put a plus negative 39 in here too if you want to. But we've got negative 39 plus 3. Since you've got that in there already, just do plus 3 and you've got negative 36. And... 22 divided by 2 is 11. Multiply them, negative 396. Again, without the work, without the formulas, no points. None. Have to use the formulas. Take a look at 16. Does that look like mx plus b? No, that's not arithmetic. Does it look geometric? It does. It looks like that. A sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. So that means we've got to use the formula that's a little more involved. Looks like so. So let's start with n. How many numbers are there? 10. 10 minus 1 plus 1 is 10. What's the first number that would pop out of this thing? It is 3. What's r? It is the 2, whatever's being raised to the power. And we need that to the 10th over 1 minus 2. Now let's do this part in our head so we have a little bit less to punch in. What's 1 minus 2? Negative 1. What's 3 divided by negative 1? Negative 3. And now it is a calculator problem. So calculator, help us out. Negative 3, parentheses, 1 minus parentheses 2, parentheses 2 to the 10th, parentheses. 3,069. Just quickly checking if that's good. Yeah, it is a really good place to stop. So 
that tomorrow we'll have a little less to do and you'll have more work time for this review assignment. So I'm going to give you the review assignment because I don't know how busy you are today and tomorrow. Um, if I were trying to break this up into two days, I would probably just do the first line tonight and do the rest tomorrow because tomorrow you're going to have more time to work in class. Oh, and I only handed you one as I'm talking and not thinking about it, thinking how I have to turn this off.